Uh, good afternoon. Uh, uh, give me a second. I will share my screen. Uh, so uh, I think we have come to the most uh, uh, easiest part of the presentations because uh, I'm sure that many of you uh, will not be having an interest on joining the army uh, or the armed forces, uh, Sri Lanka Army, Navy, and Air Force. Uh, so. Uh, but uh, I know that there are people who like to take up challenges uh, in their life and uh, to have a career in military. So we, I will go through what kind of uh, opportunities that we have in armed forces. Uh, so this is uh, the main role that the armed forces played during the war time. Uh, now with that era has gone, now we are in the post-war uh, era and our main task in this era is to look after our soldiers, their families and the retired personnel which accounts for 5% of the total population is in this country. Uh, so it's a huge population uh, uh, for the armed forces to look after. Uh, and then uh, we have a contribution in doing peacekeeping missions. Uh, in uh, various parts of the world, uh, in Haiti, in South Sudan, we have a level two hospital uh, which caters for the entire mission in uh, South Sudan, which has been there for about uh, seven years now. And uh, as usual, we are the main stakeholders in disaster response in this country, at least for the first 72 hours when the disaster happened. And even during this pandemic, uh, uh, situation and the Sri Lanka Armed Forces had to do a uh, vital role um, with regard to quarantine and other areas. And uh, as any other medical organization, we uh, we have it's a part and partial of the organization to uh, continue the medical education. Those are the main roles that we um, we are engaged in the current situation. Uh, so uh, I would start from the other side, uh, why you would not join the army, because I know that uh, many people would not, not like to join the army. So you can find ample reasons not to join the army. Uh, you have to wear uniforms if you don't like that. And uh, you will have to go on a military training, undergo military training, uh, which is uh, usually four months um, uh, for a doctor or a consultant. It is like uh, one month training, um, a basic military training. Then uh, it, it's challenging that with short notice, uh, you have to travel around the country sometimes abroad uh, and which will invariably affect your private practice. And uh, private practice is provided for military medical officers. You can do it after hours, but uh, with the challenge in nature of the job, uh, the private practice will be affected. And it's a uh, discipline uh, working environment, very very strict. So if you don't like a discipline working environment, again, you are not, uh, I think, suitable for the military medical service. Uh, and Mike, to, uh, you will have to definitely work in extreme conditions, whether we, you, we like it or not, because the, the task that has been given to medical, military medical services uh, in that nature. And uh, the other thing is from your start, from your career, you will have to engage in command duties or the administrative duties. So people who don't like to uh, administrative du duties, armed services are not a good place. So if there are anybody who still want to join armed forces, this is what we offer from the army or Navy or the Air Force uh, that uh, you can pursue a vibrant military career uh, with all sorts of military customs. Uh, uh, usually there is a uh, different way of getting uh, married even. Uh, we have our own military wedding system. Then uh, uh, the army, uh, armed forces, medical officers get a higher salary than the health ministry uh, medical officers because uh, we are paid, the armed forces, medical officers are paid just as same as on salary scale as the uh, health ministry pay scale, not uh, according to the rank they are in the uh, armed forces. And then uh, the armed forces allowance are added to that uh, salary. 
uh, of the health ministry salary and uh, you are eligible to do the uh, private practice and also you are eligible to get the uh, overtime payments and the 120th uh, allowance as well there is a various uh, varying range of uh, welfare facilities in the armed forces uh, you can enjoy then uh, um, for example there are chain of hotels managed by the armed forces uh, uh, then uh, there are a uh, lot of welfare schemes like loans uh, uh, house uh, uh, houses and things like that so welfare i think uh, if you take an organization in sri lanka armed forces are the uh, one place that they give the best welfare facilities to their workers uh, so I, uh, as i said the all perks as other doctors in the health ministry they get all the perks uh, and uh, uh, armed forces medical officers are the only one who can go up to 63 years in service all the other officers in the uh, armed forces they retire at 55 so it's same as other doctors all the perks and the regulations all are same as the health ministry regulations there are postgraduate opportunities we uh, there are at the moment there are about 35 postgraduate students here uh, under pgim from armed forces uh, uh, nobody is restricted to do postgraduate uh, uh, training at pgim and uh, uh, on top of that uh, from the armed forces uh, universities in uh, different countries of the world uh, there are courses that are being offered to armed forces medical officers in india uh, pune armed forces medical uh, university in in china i am an alumni of that uh, organization uh, in china armed forces uh, uh, military university in shanghai and in russia petersburg armed forces university uh, and uh, there are uh, courses in israel uh, uh, pakistan as well so there are a lot of uh, opportunities for sport graduate opportunities other than pgim opportunities opportunities and there are opportunities for to participate in un missions uh, as i uh, told earlier there are a lot of un missions that our medical officers participate and they are paid in a different uh, with a different allowance when they go there and they get the experience and the uh, opportunity to work in un mission environment and also the armed forces as in a health ministry we have academic engagements like uh, uh, we have a separate professional college called sri lanka college of military medicine where tri forces armed medical uh, officers and the consultants are uh, members and uh, we conduct uh, various academic activities through this professional college which is now about uh, six seven years old and also we have a separate uh, uh, master's degree at the uh, pgim which we started last year uh, master's msc in military medicine so it is at the moment limited to sri lankan armed forces uh, military medical officers so having said that what is uh, the normal uh, way of getting into army as a full time career in the army there are other avenues that will be very important for the uh, health ministry doctors who are participating in this uh, conference uh, or the web webinar mm, so uh, the doctors from the health ministry can join through the uh, transfer list to the army navy and air force uh, as second months um, so time to time uh, the health ministry advertise uh, post in uh, arm, uh, armed forces hospitals in post intern list and over list and also the special appeal list so there are about 60 medical officers who are currently attached on second months to uh, armed forces uh, hospitals uh, usually they are they work in colombo uh, but uh, uh, it's uh, it varies. If somebody from Diyatala want to Badulla wants to join uh, Diyatala Army Hospital, they can always join that place and stay there for uh, the time period that is allowed by the Ministry of Health and go back to the service uh, uh, on a transfer list again. So they get uh, normal OT and everything uh, uh, what is uh, uh, 
uh, entertained in uh, uh, eligible in the health ministry and they are issued additional ration allowance from the army amounting up to about 23000 rupees that is uh, what the every soldier in uh, in the army or armed forces get uh, and uh, anybody and even a civilian working in the armed forces are eligible to get that uh, ration allowance so that there is additional uh, allowance for these medical officers so the other option that uh, you have to join the armed forces is you can join as a consultant once you get board certified uh, as a consultant there are many fields uh, we have a tertiary care hospital in uh, army in narahem peter with all uh, with uh, nine theaters uh, and uh, all kinds of uh, you know uh, uh, specialties like 48 uh, positions are in almost all major fields are there uh, currently there are about 44 uh, consultants working in the army and uh, there are some more about 30 on the pipeline and uh, so uh, anybody uh, any consultant who has about certification can join uh, the armed forces as a lieutenant colonel to start his military career as a lieutenant colonel and most probably they will be posted to Uh, Colombo, because all of our tertiary care hospitals are in Colombo, I mean, Navy and Air Force. Uh, then, uh, apart from that, the Health Ministry uh, consultants have an opportunity to join new uh, UN peacekeeping mission in uh, South Sudan. As uh, we um, now, uh, we have four consultants uh, in South Sudan: two physicians, one anesthetist, and one surgeon. They are all from uh, Health Ministry. Uh, and uh, they can uh, stay there for one year and uh, there will be a rotation for other uh, another four p- uh, consultants to go to the south sudan it has been a very popular um, post because uh, they are on service even if you go to a country like uk you will have to go on no pay but uh, this one is this uh, post is on uh, on is an on service appointment they will not uh, lose the the senior team in the health ministry so time to time they apply in health ministry to join this un mission and it's a 1 million plus pay per month uh, and they will get the health ministry pay uh, as well and also there is a one month leave period every six months and uh, it's it has been very popular among the consultants especially junior consultants who are working in peripheries uh, Uh, they tend to go on this uh, posting so those are the avenues apart from that there is a scheme called api army that is uh, for it's a volunteer reserve this is to get the military stress while if you like to have a kind of military experience to your life then you while you are working in the uh, universities or the health ministry you can join the army uh, as to the volunteer reserve force and uh, they are given a training for about one or two weeks to introduce into the army and they continue to work as uh, civilian medical uh, officers in their respective organizations but time to time they will get refresher courses and kind of enjoy the military environment in a place like diyadalawa so it's going on this program and there are many officers who have joined into various ranks in the army in this um, program so api army uh, program is a program that uh, uh, for the doctors who like to have a, a rank uh, for them and continue their work in civilian setup but uh, if they like they can come and work in the army and go back or uh, armed forces and go back to their work at any time and they will not lose their seniority there are regulations in the uh, e code to uh, accommodate that uh, service period so that is all from me uh, thank you very much for giving this opportunity uh, slm uh, for long time now okay. for about 10 years we have been doing this and uh, I... okay thank you very much dr savin uh, there are a few questions that have come up of you will answer so that uh, the first question is uh, is there any age limit in joining armed forces especially the air force yes uh, there is a age limit it's published uh, uh, time to time in newspapers now we don't publish uh, 
मेडिकल ऑफिसर्स वेकेंसीज बिकॉज एस आई सेट दैट दिस इज गोइंग टू बी विन विन सिचुएशन वी नाइ दी डोंट वॉन्ट मेडिकल ऑफिसर्स टू कम टू दम फोर्सेज और दी अदर पार्टी ऑल्सो मोस्ट ऑफ दम डोंट वॉन्ट टू कम बट बिकॉज दैट इज बिकॉज नाउ वी हैव गेट इन इनफ डॉक्टर्स फ्रॉम द के डी यू uh but uh, we are always uh, welcome you to the uh, arm forces so it will be published uh, time to time uh, even now it's published uh, for the army you know and for the air force it, the the, uh, the age limit is 35 years do we have to go through a physical test to get selected not really uh, for the arm forces there is a basic uh, uh, not the physical test a pt test i mean you don't have to run and show that you are fit but uh, there will be a medical test uh, with uh, medical screening uh, so uh, even eyesight is not a problem like other soldiers we allow people to have, uh, wear specs and uh, join uh, but uh, there are some uh, medical screening before uh, recruiting medical officers to the armed forces just like cholesterol and things and uh to see whether they are fit enough to do a basic military training and then and then now the question what is the maximum position that uh, we can reach in military service as a doctor uh it's a second highest uh, position in the army highest position in the army or navy or air force is uh, uh lieutenant general we have a general as our commander now because he is the cds chief of defense staff now usually it's a lieutenant general Uh, or equivalent in other two forces uh, the second highest position is major general so you can go up to major general rank as a medical officer because we de- we have a director general army health services other two forces also have in naval director general health services so they all reach the second highest position that is major general or equivalent then they ask uh, can they join government sector after completing a period of and that is coming back to the government service after a period of time yes. the yeah there are a lot of doctors who uh, wish to leave the armed forces after working for some times uh, and they go back and join the government sector and private sector to join the government sector what happens is your seniority will be started from uh, the day of appointment in the health ministry but the service period that you served in the army or the other armed forces will be counted for your service For your pension, I mean, but your date of appointment or the senior will will be from the time of a and uh, date of appointment that you join the health ministry. And there's another question. To, uh, want another little bit clarification about the Ape Army and uh, what is the minimum period uh, period required uh, for a post after post post for a post intern to join join there. No, there is no limitation. We actually welcome anybody uh, with the post uh, intern arm um, work. Post intern medical officers to that uh, scheme that it's just voluntary, you know, uh, to come and serve, uh, be an uh, army officer, and you continue to work in your respective organization. There is no minimum requirement of service. If in you are a S L M A registered uh, medical officer, you can join. And there are two three questions on postgraduate. You spoke about that, but uh, are there any difficulties doing postgraduate in Uh, as in government uh, hospital yeah there are is i must say that there is a, not a difficulty but there is a limitation that uh, that is uh, uh, that uh, uh, i would say that uh, the pgim um, sometimes give uh, limited uh, vacancies for the armed forces so that is a limitation otherwise uh, there is no difficulty if you can study and if you you are allowed to sit for any amount of uh, attempts uh then uh, from the pgim side i think there is a limitation of vacancies given to uh, certain courses but nobody who passes exams so far um they have they have been in, um, they were able to um, enter to the postgraduate courses that is there i would say that there is no difficulty in doing postgraduates uh, are females expected to retire early no uh, that is for the normal soldiers uh, lady soldiers they retire after uh, 15 years the soldiers uh, male soldiers retire after 22 years but for officers male and female it's uh, for the normal officers is uh, 55 
years of age but for the doctors every uh, regulation is uh, as similar as in the health ministry so they retired 63 okay and thank you very much that, uh, the uh, car permits also same every 5 years after post intern they will get car permits just like in the health ministry